What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about some of the things I really hope to see in NHL 2022, or 22, just in general. Um, I am a big fan, as I've said before, of these NHL games. I think they're the best of the EA Sports games, while obviously having a lot of the same problems that all the EA Sports games have. I'm not saying they're a saint. I'm not saying there's some, like, diamond in the rough, although you could argue that. But here we are. We're still without an announcement of it. That's okay. I guess we'll get it eventually. We have to get it, I believe, in August. But there's a couple of things specifically, even based off of things that we've heard in terms of rumors and stuff, I do want to talk about in this video, and I want to kind of give some of my own things, some ambiguous um, uh, throughout the video, okay? So the first thing that I obviously want from this game is a leap in visuals, and that is connected to the Frostbite uh, rumors and news. And it's not even, I would not even say it's a rumor because you literally have people on their profiles or their resumes saying that they are kind of charged with moving NHL, the NHL franchise, over to a Frostbite engine. So, I mean, unless they did that for fun one day, you know, they want to mess with people, the game is obviously moving to a different engine. And yeah, while it's not made for sports games, it absolutely isn't, and people have pointed that out before, um, it is going to result in a jump of uh, visual quality. There's no doubt about it. So, I'm excited from that just as a, you know, I want to see this franchise take a step up. I don't think it looks bad, and maybe it's because ice, like ice kind of looks cool. I think there's like, there's a ne next level. Like, there absolutely is. Remember when they did the thing where ice was very, uh, like, movable? Like, you could spray people and all that stuff, and they kind of backed off of that as time went on. I actually like that because it made it feel a little bit more alive, even with, like, broken glass. Like, yeah, did it make any sense you would break glass, like, five times a game? No, but, like, it just kind of made the area feel a little bit more livable. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I think that that's kind of been lost in recent years. So, Visual quality, that's not, you know, it's something I really want, and it's also something I think we're guaranteed to get. Guaranteed to get because of the jump to Frostbite. Now, the second thing, what I want is going to PC. Now, this is definitely more of that rumor. This is based off of really what they've done with Madden and with other things where when you have put these games to Frostbite, you have now moved them over, you, that you allow them to release on PC. Look, my PC is not good enough to play NHL. I will never play an NHL game on PC. Well, maybe, you know, never say never. That's a very popular quote. Maybe I would, and maybe when I get a more powerful PC, which I'm planning on, maybe I would. I do consider myself a console kind of primary gamer, and I play, I've played the last 12 NHL games on console. I don't really feel the need to switch it, but, you know, I'm not going to deny or I'm not going to ignore the, the outcries online. You see it daily. There are lots of people that very much almost a almost like a do or die with NHL where it's like hey if it's on PC I'm in you got me it's a very simple thing if it's not on PC you you lost me I'm gonna be very disappointed I get that I'm, I'm not one of them but I, I I understand that so that is definitely something I would say for the fans that I think they overwhelmingly do want to see or at least they support no matter what they support even if it's not for them specifically, which I, I think is kind of noble of people. So that is uh, the second thing. And I think that it's likely, um, why, especially also because, you know, it's just another way of playing the game. And it really, it's not, you can say EA with greed and with money and stuff, but any Co any uh, any uh, company, any publisher, of course, the the probably one of the, the things in the front of their mind is get the game out in as many places as you can because that just ups the opportunity of people to buy it, right? It just ups the amount of people that you're selling the game to, okay? So that's the next one. The third one is anti what we've heard. And what we've heard is that there will be no crossplay. Now, this is based off of other sports games from what we've heard of what crossplay is going to be. Now, uh, now, you guys will have to let me know. Is it that you can't play the last gen version with the current gen? I'm pretty sure that's it. I don't think it's that you can't play Xbox, PlayStation, but maybe it is. So you guys will have to let me know. Without really no, even if you have no knowledge of that, and again, my knowledge on it is kind of spotty, crossplay should be a thing for all sports games, for all consoles, for all generations. Now, here's the deal I get why you wouldn't like. This is a technical problem. This is like a mechanical problem, and I hate it. I hate it, but I understand it. You see it with Battlefield, and it's just, it's factual when the games are trying to be on different generations of consoles, and they are so vastly different. And not every game is vastly different, but some of them are. And uh, weirdly enough, a lot of EA ones are, right? When you do that, it is impossible because you're having one game that literally operates and functions completely different 
from the other. Now, I think Battlefield is the best example of this done, like, in a big scale, because literally the difference is night and day between next gen or current gen and last gen. The player sizes are doubled. Uh, the map size is halfened if you play it on last gen. There's a lot of differences he where you're literally, you're playing a different game, basically. You're not even playing Battlefield 2042. You're playing uh, 1021, okay? That's what you're really playing. So I understand why those people couldn't play with each other, because the game wouldn't work, okay? Now, for sports games, I don't really think that's as much of a problem. Obviously, maybe, well, one being on one engine, one being on the other would maybe cause the issue there, right? And if so, one isn't on Frostbite, maybe on PS4, Xbox One, maybe it wouldn't work. Bottom line, I know I'm taking a long time to say it, like, I understand it, and for Battlefield, I 1,000% get it, but for sports games, I don't feel like there's enough of a gap to really justify it as much, so I would say, let us play cross-play. They're really, and this goes to kind of what I just said for the PC, like, you know, obviously this isn't talking about selling it to people, but this is, you want people to be able to play with whoever they want. You know what I mean? Sports sports is a thing where anybody anywhere can play or can get into and you can talk about it with them. That's literally like the community for any sport out there. You know what I mean? That, that's the whole purpose. So for a game, and I, maybe it sounds cheesy, but it's true. It's true. And so for a game, when you're playing it, or especially when you're playing a sports game, limiting who you're allowed to play it with is tough. And then the more you limit it, now again, I don't know. If, if only PlayStation is allowed to play with like PlayStation, let's say, that's hor you're really... That's really limiting it, and that's going to hurt. That, that overall, I think, would hurt the overall um, production. Now, the final thing is more of a, an ambiguous thing, and this is something I want to talk about a more like deep dive in future videos if you guys want me to. Sometimes these videos do well, sometimes they don't do well, so I don't really know what to say uh, in them, but I want a massive jump in something. And yes, that is, amb that is the most cop-out answer. That's the most ambiguous thing you can possibly say. Because here's the deal. Every year, and I've called this before and then it happens and I kind of laugh because it's, it's, it's funny how you can predict it. Every year, they announce the game. And this ha happens with Madden and FIFA too. They announce the game. They'll have like a trailer. They'll have like a blog post. And they'll talk about either three things or five things or eight things or ten things most times it's five most things it's here's the five big things we're changing about nhl that we're going to improve and sometimes it's bringing back features from six years ago sometimes it's fixing things like updating things it's always something like that okay and it happens and they they say okay here's the five and 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 i've said this before and the first year i started saying this on videos literally when they announced the game it was five things like i said they're going to do a five thing list and then they did it and it was literally five things and another thing I've always warned about and it always mostly is true is if your big feature that you want improved in NHL is not on that list you're out of luck you are like you are screwed and it's not happening this year maybe next year maybe two years from now but it's not happening this year yes there's small adjustments made you know I'm not, I'm not dissing by the way the, the the people who make the game they have like eight months to make this game yearly it's horrible I, I, I can't I don't even know how they do it so any improvement honestly is uh, I'll give them a round of applause I don't really blame them I blame kind of the structure of sports games but if your thing isn't on that list you're out of luck right they pick five or or so big things to either update or radically change you know sometimes it is a radical change in terms of maybe skating they've done that really in terms of even like stick handling and how the puck works they've updated that over the past I'd say two or three games and it's worked relatively well goalies they get like 1% adjustment every year. So in 100 years, they will be fixed to where we want them to be. That's kind of how it works. Um, and, and that sucks. Uh, over, like Again, I appreciate them fixing some things, but they, they don't fix all of it. And not even that, not even like I expect that. They don't even fix a percentage. They fix a very, very low percent uh, of things overall. So when I say I want something big, I guess what I'm saying, if we want to like really pin it down, when they do this and they say, here's the five big changes, I want one of them to be something like the next uh, generation, like the next big leap of how it works. So I don't care if it's how the ice works. I don't care if how it's how shooting, you know, because there are things that I think they like, again, they, they've kind of uh, sporadically moved things up over the years. So like passing now is different than passing like five, six years ago, but it didn't all happen in one go. 
I would like to see at some point, and I don't think they can because they only have less than a year to make these games. I would like one of these years to have one mechanic in this game just, I mean, like overhauled. Like, we've never seen it before. I guess deking has kind of been done before. There has been some big updates to goalies before, but I want something like that. Something really huge, and then four things that probably don't matter to a lot of people. That's probably, that's what I hope they do, and that's kind of, and that's, uh, you know, again, that's maybe even dissing those other four things, but that's what I hope. So let me know, guys. In the comments below, well, firstly, what would you think of the video? If you guys did like it, I can definitely do more of these. I will be covering uh, NHL 22 when it releases or when it even gets announced and when we see features about it. I, d I definitely want to talk about it on the channel. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure if you haven't already, you guys are subscribed. Uh, bell icon turn on so you see these videos. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter or subscribe to my second channel, we have both of those. Links are in the description below. We also have Patreon and YouTube memberships. If you guys want to support us financially, you do get exclusive things back. You're not just giving us money to give us money. Patreon, links in the description. The join button is next to the subscribe button. They're the exact same thing, just in two different spots, depending on where you feel comfortable. Thank you for watching, guys, and I hope to see you all on the next video.